What's up, basketball fans? I am evasive and happy I bet all my savings on college basketball brackets and my wife left me and took the kids month. Bully. It's the happiest time of year for you if basketball is your favorite sport and you like the way they dribble up and down the court. Me though, I don't follow basketball um, at all. I never went to a college game. I never went to a professional game. I don't know who any of the players are. And the only time I ever played basketball was when I was eight years old and my dad signed me up for it just in case I might be good at it. I wasn't. This jersey is actually the only piece of basketball merch I own, repping my favorite team, the Washington Generals. If you don't know who the Washington Generals are, they're the fake basketball team that intentionally loses to the Harlem Globetrotters every time they play. I love them. Their win-loss record really speaks to me. Anyway, since it is basketball month and I am what many might consider to be a woman, today I'm gonna to be doing a deep dive into the pay gap between the NBA and the WNBA. We're gonna be talking about profit shares. We're gonna be talking about viewership ratio. We're gonna be talking about attendance numbers. We're gonna be talking about merch sales. We're going to be talking about Never mind. I, I don't want to do this. Instead, I'm going to watch some movies. Um, I've been told that I'm very good at that. According to this page on Letterboxd titled Hoop, there it is, a comprehensive list of basketball movies. There are roughly 200 movies about basketball. I'm not smart enough to talk about documentaries, so subtract those and there's 160. And I'm what's sometimes referred to as a woman, so subtract all the movies about men and we got... Huh. Well, this shouldn't take too long. By the way, I'm only watching movies where women play or coach basketball. So when I say basketball movies for women, that is what I'm referring to. The first movie on this list is a silent film from 1927 called The Fair Co-Ed. It's about a girl who joins a college basketball team so she can get with the coach. Of course. It was never released on home media or streaming. So the only known version of it available to watch online looks like this. Supposedly the film in its original quality is buried somewhere in the MGM archives and it's never been released because let's be honest, I don't think anybody asked for it. As far as silent movies go, it's very mediocre with a healthy amount of 1920 style sexism thrown in, but it is nice to see footage of a woman playing basketball a hundred years ago, I think. Like I think that's the ball right there and that's the girl or no, that's, that's the girl and that's another girl and those are uh, boys. Okay, this is, um... After the fair co-ed, there were no more basketball movies for women until Coach in 1978, a super low budget movie about an Olympic gold medalist named Randy, who was accidentally hired to coach boys basketball because, well, her name is Randy. It's a really awful movie. The principal wants her fired because she's a woman and encourages the students to sexually harass her. And then she ends up having sex with one of the students in the locker room. It's just so bad. Like I'm pretty sure this was supposed to be a porn tape at some point. Like the whole movie just has those real 1970s porn vibes to it, you know? Get serious. No, thank you. isn't all bad though, okay? It did give us this original song. My basketball coach is a lovely lady. Smile if you call her a dame. Besides teaching us how to be the best, she won her own Olympic fame. You can call me a rah rah, call the sissy boom bah, but it'll be a romp once we get. Okay, full disclosure, I didn't actually watch this one, but that's not my fault, okay? This movie is not available online anywhere. As far as I can tell, it was only ever released on VHS and none of it has been posted online aside from the trailer, but all the descriptions I see call it a sex-filled showdown where there's more than one type of Duncan going on. So I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that this one was probably supposed to be a point eight too. The 
next basketball movie on this list is called Annie O. It's a forgotten made for TV movie that aired on Showtime in 1996. And boy, does it show time. Please talk. The story is really bland. It's about a high school in Washington state that doesn't have a girls basketball team. So a girl joins the varsity boys team and everyone's like, oh, what? You can't do that. Girls can't play basketball. It's very nineties in a bad way. These kids can't act. The dialogue is cliche. Every scene has some family matter sounding music over it. Oh, 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 pretty good for a girl. All right, you two. More shooting, less talking, okay? First one the horse, coughs up half of his or her allowance, or uh, takes Annie's turn doing dishes for a week. <laughs> Everybody makes a shot before the next man. Person. Eddie is a movie where Whoopi Goldberg coaches the New York Knicks. That's the movie. Whoopi Goldberg coaches the New York Knicks. New York City. Home of the legendary New York Knicks. Bailey, you gonna try something new tonight like trying to coach? But this season, oh, the Knicks suck. It is the NBA, buddy. No butt heads allowed, but you keep coming back. Then fate. Anyone who makes the free throw gets to be honorary coach for the second half. Lent them a hand. It isn't available to stream in any form anywhere, and it was never remastered or re-released. So if you've never heard of this movie, that's probably why. I was expecting it to be about sexism, but apparently 1990s Whoopi Goldberg was just so powerful, the gender barrier is barely even discussed here. So the gender is inappropriate. Hey, I got your gender right here, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> it's probably fun to watch if you're a Knicks fan, but as far as 1990s Whoopi goes, this is one of her more forgettable movies. Not to mention the only way to legally watch it now is with a physical copy, which makes sense when you consider that adding it to streaming at this point would mean they would have to add a jump scare warning because Dennis Rodman is in it. And also Rudy Giuliani. And also Donald Trump. Actually hiring Eddie was my idea from the beginning. Directed by sisters Gretchen and Julia Dyer, Late Bloomers is a pretty obscure indie movie about a girl's basketball coach and a math teacher in a small town high school who fall in love with each other. Yeah, that's right. We got an explicitly lesbian women's basketball movie. <laughs> Yeah, baby! I was really surprised by this one. The acting is good, the jokes are funny, the basketball coach kind of looks like Tilda Swinton. There's not much information about it online, but from what I could gather, the movie was shot in Dallas, Texas and played at the Sundance Film Festival, and it ended up being the only movie the sisters ever made together. It's a real hidden gem that not a lot of people have seen, and in my opinion, that really needs to change because A, it's free to stream on more than one streaming service, and B, it's the only movie I know of where two lesbians play basketball naked in the back backyard. YouTube won't let me show you much more than this, but trust me, it's there. Okay, objectively speaking, Love and Basketball is the best movie on this list by far. Directed by Gina Prince Bythewood and produced by Spike Lee, Love and Basketball is about two basketball prodigies, Monica and Quincy, who live next door to each other and grow up together in LA in the 1980s. It's a heartwarming romance movie with two main characters that are so charismatic and have such good chemistry you'd swear they were dating in real life. Oh, the dialogue is so natural and it's got that romance movie haze over the whole thing that's just like, mwah. I don't wanna spoil anything else for people that haven't seen it. Just know that if you're into love movies or basketball movies, you should really watch this one. And also if you're into other kinds of movies too, because it's a good movie. Double Team is a Disney Channel movie with just the absolute worst title they possibly could have picked. It's based on the childhood of two actual WNBA players, Heidi and Heather Burge. They're supposedly 14 in this movie. Yes, really. They're 14. 14 year old girls. Those girls are 14. The plot is like any other high school basketball movie. The girls join the team. They're really tall. They win the big game. The end. It's not bad or good. It's just average. Even as far as Disney Channel movies go, this was one that doesn't really get talked about very much because nobody really cares about it. For some bizarre reason, instead of getting actual tall high school twins like they obviously could have, they chose two actresses who were too old, 
not twins, and were also the wrong height. I'm just under 5'9", and they make me to say one. They're constantly putting things in the girls' shoes to make them taller. That's a good inch. That's a good inch. I have really long, straight, really light blonde hair, and she has a little bit darker, short, kind of funky hair, so they cut my hair and they give her extensions. Yeah, all these are fake. It's a made-for-TV movie from the early 2000s. They literally called it double-teamed. Like, clearly nobody involved thought any of this through. Oh my god, okay. So, Juana Man is a movie about an NBA player named Jamal Jeffries who gets banned from the league for whipping it out in front of the audience during a game. How about this? Bam! Oh lord. Ha! Oh my god. Ha! So to get his career back on track, he disguises himself as a woman, calls himself Juana Man, and joins the WNBA. This is one of those movies that really has to be seen to be believed. Like Jamal tries on his aunt's clothes while singing I'm Coming Out by Diana Ross. Jamal's fake boob turns into bad early 2000s CGI and flies across the room, except for this part where it disappears for a few frames. Jamal gets pulled over by a closeted transgender cop. That's not a joke. Jamal Jeffries. Who's Jamal Jeffries? Uh, that's me, officer. You see, the thing is, I, I just recently had a little operation. You mean one of those operations where you, uh... Uh-huh. Get out of the car. Excuse me? What is the problem? Out of the car. Come on. Spin around. All right, how about this? You look fabulous. I'm having it done, too. I'm only about a thousand dollars away right now. Who did you? Well, whoever it was, I did a great job. I got my post-op outfit all ready and waiting, hanging in my closet. It's got a little ruffle. There's so much wrong with this scene, but I just... <laughs> um, what else? What else? What else? Genuine is in this movie. Lil' Kim is in this movie. Jamal uses a urinal in the men's room when he could have just used a stall. Um, what else? The young lady wants a filet mignon. Oh yeah, of course, the filet mignon scene. Filet mignon. Also the real Heather Burge from Double Team, like the actual one that the movie was based off of. She is also in Juana Man for some reason. And this is her only line in the movie. In my country, penis okay. My mother have penis. Anyway, if anybody would like to make a 50 minute long video essay analyzing what Juana Mann has to say about transgender people in sports, please go right ahead because I will not be making that video. Another Showtime TV movie, this one is about a coach who arrives on a Native American reservation and turns a local girls basketball team into state champions. It's an obscure indie film that's based on the PBS documentary Rocks with Wings, but changes all of the details to instead be about girls from a fake tribe on a reservation that doesn't exist in a different state. And then the plot hinges on the coach not getting their culture, but it's like, huh? This movie has basically the exact same plot as the movie I just talked about. A new coach comes to a small town and turns a local girls basketball team into state champions, except this one is about a little town in Oklahoma in the 1960s. This one is also based on a true story, but unlike Edge of America, they actually told the real story. And they even included a cute little clip in the credits of the actual women giving the actual coach a birthday gift during a scene where they all got to be extras. I'll give it credit, it's got better acting than most of the other movies on this list, especially especially on Bruce Dern's part, but other than that, it's kind of unremarkable and the cheesiness gets to be a lot at some points. For you, for believing in us. For this season and last, no matter what happens tomorrow. For the games we won and lost. For treating us the same as boys, expecting more and making us give it. From all of us, we, we love, love you. you. get this. This movie is about a coach who
who turned the local high school girls basketball team into state champions. This time the setting is Indiana in 2009. Sam Rockwell plays the coach and his main character trait is that he's a severe alcoholic. Emma Roberts and Rooney Mara are also in it as well as famous character actress Margot Martindale. Honestly, compared to the other movies, this one is decent. It's fun, it's cute. The girls take pity on Sam Rockwell and his severe alcoholism and try to help him out. But oh my God, the soundtrack ruins this movie. When they were editing, they just put this stupid stock music over every other scene and it's just, oh, just listen. Your parents across the border come over to Indiana. You learn English and you be a starter next year. But listen, I want you to leave it all out there tonight, you understand? Don't pace yourself. Leave your heart on the court, you hear me? I love you. Y'all are not gonna believe this. This movie is about a coach who turns a local small town girls basketball team into state champions. But this time, the coach is a woman. Oh my God! My mind is blown. Another based on a true story movie, this one is about a woman named Kathy Rush who coached girls basketball at a Catholic school in Pennsylvania in the 1970s. It's a semi-religious, G-rated, boring little indie movie. There really isn't much to say here. The one interesting thing to me was that this movie premiered at a tiny film festival in 2009, but didn't get released until 2011. So when it came time to promote the movie, the actors had clearly forgotten all about it and they had no idea what to say in the interviews. It's quite an opportunity to be able to play a woman who uh, who actually exists and you can go talk to and ask about her adventures. And in this case, uh, Kathy has uh, many. Um, Reminds me of films that have a message in them. And um, sports is a great way of communicating uh, you know, metaphors. And, and I think that's a turning point in the film when uh, she's not intimidated to speak her piece. And it's a very important moment when... Uh... So this movie has kind of haunted me for years because there's a poster for it in the basement of NYU Film School. And I used to walk by it every time I went to class. Every day, these women just staring at me judging me for my life choices. It's about a group of middle-aged women in Texas who are trying to raise money for breast cancer by challenging a local high school girls basketball team to some charity games. The movie itself is very five out of 10. The characters who supposedly have been friends for life have zero chemistry. The actresses with the exception of Wanda Sykes are not very funny. Most of the jokes are about menopause. It tries to make statements on aging, marriage, cancer, sexism, racism, religion, homophobia, but it doesn't have enough time to focus on any of these topics. So it just kind of ends up being about nothing. Um, yeah, it's, it's a very good message for women. Like you said, very empowering. And it's a good message um, about, you know, it doesn't matter. You can you pretty much do anything. Okay, honestly guys, I can't even make fun of this movie because I would just feel bad. It's about girls in a small town in Iowa in the early 90s playing a now defunct form of basketball called Six on Six. Of all the indie movies on this list, this one had the lowest budget by far. The producer and writer made the movie as a passion project and has apparently been trying to get the movie made since 1996. It's amateur with a capital A, but when you know that, it's actually kind of cute for what it is. The movie opened in several theaters around Iowa the grand premiere was at the Palms in Waukee. Everybody that we worked with here in Iowa, people in New Providence, people at the, the girls basketball, or high school athletic association, the gyms we worked at, coaches that helped us, referees that helped us, scorekeepers, uh, we just felt a lot of love while we were making this film here. I don't necessarily recommend it as a movie, but I mean, this man did his best and that's what counts here. The last movie on this list though, oh my God. Oh my God, what the f What the f fuck? A movie called She Ball, directed and starring Nick Cannon and produced by Chris Brown. Ew, what? Well, I watched it and um, 
So the plot is that Nick Cannon owns a community center and isn't making much money, so he joins a basketball tournament to win money to save the community center. There's this white girl named Shelby that Nick Cannon keeps calling Shotgun Shells, like it's the most clever nickname ever invented. They have a thing together or something. Also, there's this guy named Billy D. Ball. <laughs> He keeps handing out flyers, telling people to vote for him for city council. And you'd think with how much Mr. Balls is in the beginning of the movie that he must be really important, but no, he just kind of disappears. Chris Brown is also in the movie. He plays a guy named Taco. Um, he isn't important to the plot either. The biggest problem with this movie though is that it isn't really a women's basketball movie. The poster and title make it look like it's a female-led, girl power sports film, but there's more scenes of the men in this movie playing basketball than the women. I'm actually like 90% sure this movie was just an elaborate PR stunt for Chris Brown. Like, look y'all, he's not a violent misogynist anymore. Look, he produced a movie called She Ball. Now would a violent misogynist produce a movie called She Ball? I don't think so. Look, he's reformed, girl power, feminism. Chris Brown's a feminist, of course. He produced She Ball. So that's all the women's basketball movies. And um, yeah. Uh, ooh. Basically, if you want to watch a basketball movie about women, your options are either generic, low-budget high school sports movie or wacky, mediocre comedy. Also, Late Bloomers or Love and Basketball if you want to watch a good movie. Or Joanna Man if you're wasted. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Evasive. And I've got a Patreon now, so if you want to support me in doing whatever it is this is. Uh, I have a link in the description below. And finally, now that I've absorbed all of this women's basketball content, it's time for me to put it to the test. I am going to go outside and see if watching all of these women's basketball movies has made me a better woman at basketball. Let's go.